Hi, everyone. Judge Andrew Napolitano here for Judging Freedom. Today is Friday, October 13th, 2023. Phil Giraldi joins us now. Phil, it's always a pleasure, my dear friend. Uh, welcome back to the show. W what is your take on the massive and almost unprecedented uh, intelligence failure on the part of Israeli Mossad and to a certain extent on the part of the Israeli uh, military uh, which uh, precipitated or permitted uh, the Hamas uh, attacks of last weekend? Well, well to be perfectly honest, I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced it's all that simple. Uh, I have this feeling that there are a, a number of competing narratives that are playing out here and that uh, one of them might well be something like what we might call a false flag. Uh, I have a feeling that, uh, well, in fact, there's evidence on the table uh, that the Israelis were warned by the Egyptians, among others, uh, that something was brewing in Gaza. And uh, the Israelis uh, beyond that have uh, had uh, and still have uh, amazing intelligence capabilities, both electronic and human, uh, when it comes to their surrounding of, of the Gaza enclave. So I have a feeling that a lot more was known and there were perhaps some political decision making going in on this to maybe let the Gazans do something naughty and then take advantage of it. And it, it, it just might be the Gazans did a better job at overcoming the obstacles. But, uh, you know, there might be a political spin here. So um, uh, the the chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, Congressman McCall of uh, Texas, uh, says that he was briefed by your former colleagues, doesn't say who, of course, CIA, uh, which established uh, definitively that Egyptian uh, intelligence warned uh, the Mossad. Prime Minister Netanyahu denies that. Well, what do you expect Prime Minister Netanyahu to say is in the death throes of his tenure for this breach having occurred during his uh during his uh his tenure but do you think it realistic that the israelis would have looked the other way because they didn't expect the invasion to be as severe and bloody and horrific as it was and they're looking for an excuse to do we're looking for an excuse to do what they're now doing which is invading leveling and decimating portions of gaza yeah i mean that's the whole thing you have to kind of figure out which is the quid pro quo here? Uh, is it was it more important to uh, to uh, sort of crush this thing before it started, or was it more important to let it play out to a certain extent and exploit it? And so I'm kind of you know on the fence about this. I although my inclinations are that uh, having been let me let me put it this way, having been a intelligence officer, uh, not an analyst, but somebody who actually worked on the ground with spies and all that sort of thing. Uh, I would just make a guess that the uh, uh, the Mossad had uh, probably a hundred agents inside Gaza who <laughs> were reporting on what was, they were seeing and what they were hearing. And so I, I find this a, a formidable uh, obstacle. And I kind of think, you know, there's got to be another twist here. And the other twist would be, well, do we want to mow the grass now? Do we want to destroy Gaza completely? Uh, this will give us the excuse to do so. You know, you you uh, you're a step ahead of me. I was going to ask you if uh, Mossad had intel on the ground. You're saying, uh, from your understanding, there were a hundred agents. Now this is curiouser and curiouser, as Alice in Wonderland said. How could a hundred agents have missed the preparation by thousands? Uh, of people, air, sea, and land, uh, to uh, invade uh, Israel. Well, the one the simple answer to that is that they didn't; that they were reporting it. Uh, if you go to uh, 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 Pepe Escobar's article that came out today, uh, he he cites a link and evidence uh, that the training exercises that uh, Hamas was engaging in for this exercise for this attack. Uh, were observed. And um, so it's, you know, it's, it, it, and again, you, you chase this around and you, you wind up in the same place. Now, one other question that I have in my mind 
is how did Hamas get its weapons? Here it was, it's completely confined on all four sides, uh, completely enclosed, cut off from the world, and yet they had some very sophisticated missiles and things. So are we looking at a double cross, a triple cross, or a quadruple cross? What, what is the uh, reputation in the international intelligence community uh, of Mossad? What is the difference between Mossad and Shin Bet? How uh, vaunted are the Israelis at the intelligence business? Well, that's a, that's a, a complicated question, of course. Um, Shin Bet is a domestic, uh, more like the FBI, uh, uh, Mossad is the foreign intelligence agency. Uh, I had a lot of contact with, with Mossad when I was in the uh, CIA, and uh, they had a very mixed reputation. Uh, it was generally felt within the, the ranks of the agency uh, that they were not to be trusted, uh, that they basically mixed propaganda in with intelligence to such an extent that their intelligence was not reliable. So I think they're a heavily politicized and uh, very much driven by an agenda type intelligence agency. Very good with the electronic stuff, uh, but not so good with the human stuff. Does Mossad spy on the U.S. and does the CIA spy on Israel? Both are true. Uh, and um, the extent to which uh, Mossad or Israel is an intelligence target of the United States is, is kind of limited by politics. But on the other hand, uh, Mossad and Israel are heavily dependent on the United States. So their spying effort against the United States, and particularly like in Washington, using electronics and that kind of thing, is formidable. You remember uh, the case of Jonathan Pollard, I believe, uh, an American double agent or an American who became an Israeli agent was convicted and spent many years in jail. He, he may have been commuted by President Obama. I don't know, but it was after at least 15 or 20 years uh, in jail. People were sort of outraged. The Israelis are spying on us. And your 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 answer was a, a certain and firm and unhesitating yes. OK, let me go to the other side of the coin. Wouldn't the CIA have known what Hamas was up to? Well, uh, that depends. If, um, if Hamas had been so, shall we say, unprofessional as to be talking on unsecured phones and, and, and that sort of thing, then the CIA or NSA, which has a big station in, in Israel, uh, would have immediately picked it up. Uh, but if the, uh, they had been careful, um, I do not believe the agency runs any of its own agents inside places like Gaza uh, because they would run into the complications with, with Mossad if they were doing so. Um, but, um, you know, the technical side, the U.S. is very good and, and could have picked it up, but I don't know in this case. If uh, Congressman um, McCall did receive a, a briefing, an intelligence briefing, with something as secret as, yeah, the Egyptians told the Israelis and the Israelis didn't do anything. A, is, is that uh, top secret information that he should not have revealed? And B, who would have given him uh, that briefing? Well, it could be, uh, to answer the, the second part first, it could have been the office of the DNI, Director of National Intelligence, that did that kind of briefing. Or it probably would be at the top level, uh, either the director or deputy director of the CIA who would have done it. If he says it was CIA, then that's probably who it was. Uh, but he has perfect right, at, at, given his position, to uh, be given that kind of information. I would rather suspect that um, either NSA or CIA came up, or even the military came up with that information, uh, probably from a leak through the Egyptians. Uh, that would seem to me to be the most likely channel whereby that information would get out. If you believe the uh, federal prosecutors in Manhattan, there's a 
an Egyptian intelligence agent in the United States Senate who happens to be the senior senator from New Jersey. I'm sorry, I couldn't I couldn't resist throwing uh, that out there. Uh, that's uh, that's movie like that Bob Menendez was a secret agent for the Israelis. We'll leave that to the federal courts uh, in New York. Would the the nature of this information have been secret? The um, Egyptian intelligence warned the Mossad and the Mossad did nothing about it. Would that very statement have been something that the congressman, though entitled to know it, was not entitled to reveal it on national television? Uh, correct. He was not entitled to reveal it. And that's largely because of the sources and methods. Uh, if this is something that was an intercept or something like that, that's considered top secret code word. Mm. So it's, um, it's, it's something that uh, uh, he should have been um, perhaps more um, misdirecting in terms of how he described it or the way he talked about it. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I was uh, stricken by it when I, I saw that he had made that statement. Gary, I know we just uh, went through all the sound on tape before we started, but do you still have that Neil Cavuto one where Congressman uh, McCall was watching Admiral Kirby, who purported to know nothing about this, and then Congressman McCall piped in and said, well, we got an intelligence briefing telling us that the uh, Egyptians know. Okay. All right. So Admiral Kirby, the spokesperson for the um, uh, National Security Council, was asked in the press room of the White House, uh, did the um, did Mossad know about this? And he said, I can't talk about it. And that presser was being watched by my friend and former colleague, Neil Cavuto at Fox, who had as his guest on air at the time, Congressman McCall. And Congressman McCall piped in and said, well, we were briefed. We were told uh, that the Egyptians uh, warned uh, the Israelis. Uh, I can't imagine he's going to be prosecuted, uh, but still you're telling me that's that's top secret. What, what was uh, overheard by NSA when they're listening to the Egyptians talk to the Israelis, and then they were Report that to American congressional leaders. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is there's there's, there's no excuse for that. You know, there there are kinds of ways for government to leak classified information, but the um, uh, again sources and methods are something they come up against uh, in a lot of cases. And in this case, obviously, he was uh, somewhat indiscreet because the listener, uh, if if he or she knows anything about how intelligence operations work these days, they would realize this is the probable source. Uh, and, and besides which, you know, there were there have been other sources um, in, independently, uh, international sources, uh, news sources that have also said the Egyptians uh, had information. Is it true, Phil, that Hamas was actually created and supported by the Israelis in order to be a, a buffer, uh, a rival, an obstacle to the uh, Palestinian, P, the old PLO when uh, Yasser Arafat ran the PLO. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. There was a, there was a, a something like a national election among the Palestinians back in 2006. And um, the uh, Israelis, uh, with help from the United States, um, basically created a counterparty to oppose the Fatah, which was Yasser Arafat's old PLO, uh, because the, they wanted basically to, def to divide the Palestinian opposition. And uh, they were successful at it. Hamas won the election, a fair election, clearly in Gaza, and Fatah won on the West Bank. So they divided effectively the the, Pal the Palestinian political structure, and uh, so the yeah is Israelis were supporting this thing, which is, of course, another reason why before I suggested, are we looking at a, a triple cross or a quadruple cross here? Uh, the, the, you know, there are all kinds of balls up in the air. Was there a time when the Israelis actually gave uh, financial uh, assistance to Hamas? 
Yeah, they gave financial system to Hamas, and uh, I believe there were even suspicions back then that they were um, arming them to a certain extent, which was why the uh, the issue of where the weapons come from gets rather interesting. Um, yeah, they, they actually were funding them, and then they got some uh, other uh, intermediaries to do the funding for them. Uh, where, where, I, does I the, see, I where does this? I don't know how it ended. Where does the CIA think that Hamas got its weapons from? Well, I wish I could answer that, but I don't know. Okay, I, I, I've I've been out of the organization since that happened. How uh, has Israel provoked Hamas in recent days, in recent years? Well, essentially, I mean, Israel a few years back uh, basically um, uh, shut uh, the Gaza Strip off. They uh, they built their fortifications and walls around it on the two sides that they have with Gaza. Uh, they got the Egyptians to go along on the south side, and they turned their navy loose on the Mediterranean. Uh, uh, Gaza Gazan fishermen who used to go out in the Mediterranean and, and fish. Uh, if they try that these days, will uh, get shot by the Israeli Navy. Uh, and the uh, Gazans uh, cannot leave the Gazan Strip without Israeli permission. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're basically in, as some people describe it, a, a, an enormous uh, two million person outdoor prison. Our... Uh... Friend uh, uh, Gerald Salenti calls it a concentration camp. Is that a is that a, a label that you would agree adequately and accurately describes it? Yeah, I think that's a fair description. It even includes attributes of the old concentration camps in Poland, where uh, they basically kept the uh, the prisoners starved. The uh, the Israelis control food going into the enclave. They control the water going into the enclave. The water is 90% unpotable, according to the United Nations. Uh, so they, uh, they when you say unpotable, you mean not drinkable? Not drinkable, not drinkable. And the uh, they control the electricity. They control the utilities. Uh, they control what little amounts of money are allowed to go in. Oh, there's no economy there, and and 50% uh, of the population is completely unemployed. And uh, a, a lot of the people have uh, now, as of what's been going on the last few days, their houses have been destroyed. So, Are you uh, surprised at all by the ferocity uh, of the Israeli response? No, uh, I'm not. Um, but again, I think to a certain extent, uh, I empathize with, uh, with I, you know, I don't, I don't favor anybody invading somebody else's country and killing people. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, am, I, I understand how when you've had maybe a thousand people killed in a terrorist type attack, you want revenge. And the United States was like that after 9-11. Uh, so the Israelis uh, doing what they're doing. I perfectly understand why they're doing it, although I don't uh, I don't recommend it. But these are war crimes, Phil. Look at what we're looking at. This is the indiscriminate uh, destruction of all all structures in the area. This this is not the surgical pursuit of killers. This is the uh, almost genocide. Yeah, well, you're great. I agree with you on that level. the uh, The fact is, this is destruction of whole neighborhoods. They're targeting hospitals. They're targeting schools. That sort of thing. I mean, this. This is not justified in any way by uh, a legitimate sense of, uh, of revenge that's, uh, that's commensurate with the crime. What, would uh, Bibi Netanyahu have been cold-hearted enough to have allowed the slaughter of some of his own citizens uh, in order to acquire the pretext of international respectability, which would be used to justify this kind of an invasion? Well, in my personal opinion, I think Bibi Netanyahu is uh, is capable of anything. Uh, he's a liar. He's a thief. He basically, uh, as far as as far as I believe, uh, the Israelis knew about 9/11 before it happened. They didn't warn the United States, their closest and best ally, and they allowed 3,000 Americans to get killed because Netanyahu felt it would tie the United States to Israel 
in terms of its war on terror, and he felt it was a good thing. That's my judgment, based as an intelligence officer at that time, that that is basically what occurred. So I don't, I, I give uh, Netanyahu no credit for humanity or anything else, and uh, I think he's quite capable of killing some of his own people uh, to to get what he wants. Are there uh, American CIA agents on the ground in Gaza whose uh, lives uh, are in jeopardy because of the type of um, uh, carpet bombing that we just uh, witnessed? Well, there are some American citizens, obviously, in Gaza. There might be uh, dual national citizens with, uh, with uh, possibly even Israeli citizenship. I don't know. But uh, I would suspect that some of them might be informants for uh, U.S. intelligence. Uh, that is a typical pattern overseas, and I would not be surprised. Well, might the Israelis then be killing uh, CIA officers and CIA assets? Yeah, they might be. That's, that's a possibility. Uh, if, there, if there is any kind of intelligence uh, activity there on the part of the United States, these people would be targetable. Bill Giraldi, thank you very much. These are not easy things to talk about. You're one of the most intellectually honest people I know. And we are deeply grateful, as are the viewers, uh, for your coming on the show today. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Um, thank you, Phil. Let's see what's coming up, my friends. It's a busy Friday afternoon for us. Let me just get to uh, to my schedule here. Um, so at 2.30 Eastern, ask the judge. You can type in your question for me, and I'll answer it. At 3.30 Eastern, you'll hear a very different story from a CIA a veteran. Jack Devine will be here by popular demand at 3.30. Uh, and at 4 o'clock, these are all uh, Eastern times, our intelligence roundtable with Larry Johnson and with Ray McGovern. We'll see you shortly, Judge Napolitano, for Judging Freedom.